Oh, hello there. How are you? Oh, you that well. Oh, I am so delighted to hear it. So am I. No virus here, not yet anyway. But it has been 21 weeks of quarantine. Can you imagine that? 21 weeks! It was only supposed to be 12, but here I am now, 21. 21 today. No, no. <laughs> Wrong one, isn't it? <laughs> now, I'd like to introduce you to a couple of good friends of mine. This is Tom and Donna. And Tom and Donna, they live in Indiana. A few days ago, they took a flight from Chicago O'Hare to go to Portland, Maine. And that was a very interesting flight for them because it was a flight that was almost empty. Anyway, they asked me if I could replicate that flight for them on my simulator. And of course, I can. <laughs> I can do anything, go anywhere except outside. <laughs> so let's have a look and see what the flight is all about, shall we? Well, first of all, as you can see here on the Navigraph charts, we have Chicago O'Hare here, and we have Portland, Maine, all the way over here. Now, according to this, the straight line distance is 781 nautical miles. Now, there are no waypoints in this because we need to find out a little bit more about the flight that they took. Now, they took United Flight 3439 and it departed from Chicago, Illinois and according to this, it left gate C28 and arrived at Portland, Maine at gate 3. And here's the route that it took. So there are obviously some waypoints on here. Now over here in this section you can see the route that they took. And this was the flight plan that United Airlines filed for this particular flight. So I'm just going to copy that. Now, down here you can see that they had flights every day between Chicago and Portland. I'll just pick this one for Tuesday the 28th and see if there's a different route. Oh, that's interesting. Look at this. No difference at all. So apparently, this is a route that is well trodden and well used. And by the way, I did check this with some American Airlines flights. American Airlines also flies between Chicago and Portland, Maine. And guess what? They take exactly the same route. So now that we know what the route is, now we can go into SimBrief and we can make ourselves a flight plan. So here we are in SimBrief and let's start out. Here we go, Ryanair, <laughs> we're 186 and we're going to depart from KORD and we're going to go to KPWM. The alternate is Boston. We're going to put in our aircraft flight which is Ryanair. By the way, the OFP layout is also right in here. As you can see, there are different profiles to select. Mine is for Ryanair. The cruise profile, of course, is, is number 10. And our passengers, we're always full because we serve free complimentary champagne and dish out caviar like they are going out of style. 
we have a half a ton of cargo. Ah, now that's interesting. Here we go. Look at this. It's put in the same route as a suggestion that we've been just looking at. So obviously, this is a well-trodden route. And then down here, you can see the flight path. All right, we'll save this. And then we'll generate all the, the briefings. Obviously, the departure runway and the arrival runway will be up to the wind direction as we depart and take and land at the other end. So there's all the information. This is this is our flight right there. Look at that. So we'll merely copy that then. Go into Navigraph. Go into type the route. And we will paste that information in it. And there it is. Look at that. There's our entire route all the way along. We just don't know what the runway will be for the departure or arrival yet. But whichever it is, this will be the route that we will be taking. So there you have it. That's how easy it is to plan a route, to plan a flight. And we will do that. Now, I will be making one minor change in the simulator flight for today. I'm not going to do the entire two-hour flight because that's how long it took. What I'm going to do is when we get up to cruising altitude, I'm then going to speed up the video so that it only takes a few minutes to do the journey. And then once we get to the descent point, then I'll come back onto normal speed for the approach and the landing. And why do you ask? Well, I discovered something rather interesting about flying jets, commercial jets. They're computer generated and driven, which means the pilot actually takes off by hand, then pushes a button, and then the computer takes over. When they're coming in for the approach, the pilot disconnects the autopilot and flies it in by hand. Believe it or not, those are the only two points where the pilot is actually in control of the aeroplane. Now, I asked my pilot pal about this, and I said, how do you get on with these long journeys? It seems to be boring. Because after all, when I flew, I flew propeller uh, jobs, not jets. And there was no such thing as onboard computers. We had to dial in the frequency of every navigation aid that we may be able to locate and constantly make adjustments and do the flight plan that way. It was labor intensive, but we were busy the whole time. So I asked my pilot pal, what does he do? And he said, well, the airlines, they give you a stack of papers with things to fill in, boxes to tick. They want to you to fill in the fuel, the temperatures, the distances, the in engine readings, the fuel flows, all of that sort of stuff at certain waypoints, just about every 15 or 20 minutes. So there's no way the pilot in the cabin is going to fall asleep. They're too busy filling in papers. <laughs> Isn't that a bit of a revelation? Wow. Well, anyway, Tom, Donna, are you ready? We're going to fly again that route that you took just a short while ago. And this, this is for you, kiddos. Well, hello there. Come on in and take your seat. Here we are, Chicago International Airport at O'Hare. 
and we're at C-28, which is part of the United Airlines um, terminal. I am surrounded by United Airlines aircraft, but I am proudly flying the Ryanair colours. <laughs> oh well. Now then, let's get started, shall we? So, power on, 28 volts is showing, put down the fuel pump, and let's get the auxiliary power unit started up. Remember, the engine gas temperature is going to rise up and then it will reduce itself down and then this blue light will turn on to tell me that there's 115 volts being generated by the APU and all I have to do is push these two down to switch from the battery to the generator and then we will have some power to work with. Coming up, there it is, good, now we have power, see 115 volts up here, so galley on, emergency exit lights, no smoking, fasten seat belt, and then the left and the right window heat, the probe, okay, and then the fuel pumps, put the APU bleed on, and now we can get some air conditioning in the back. Put on the steady light, and that alerts everybody that we're working. Next, we'll turn on the IRS to get them aligned so that we can have our GPS position. One arch, second arch, looks like we have a good position. Well the first thing that we're going to do when we start up is we push the menu button, go into FS actions, and we put in the amount of fuel that we're going to need. And according to Simbrief, we are going to need 8633. So 8633. And now we have the amount of fuel. Payload. We have 174 out of 174. Full, full plane. And 250, 250 kilos in each in the forward and in the aft and here we go now we are set to make our position and initialize that so we're at KORD and KORD parking gate coordinates at C28 is 41.58.9 and 87.54.6 so and we put that in so now we need to do the route KORD is still in the temporary and here's where we we're going to cheat a little bit. We're not going to put the whole thing in. We already have the flight plan is loaded into PMDG. So we will merely select it and execute it. We will put in our flight number though, of course, which is RYR186. Ryanair 186. 
in the middle of all of these United Airplanes. <laughs> now the next thing we want to do is we need to put in our fix. So we push the fix button and since KPWM is our destination we're going to put in KP and then WM. And we'll make a four mile circle and we'll make a 10 mile circle and a 30 mile circle. The 30 mile circle is there because you cannot in prepared 3D you can't contact the tower until you are 30 miles away from the airport so that's the reason for that. For 10 that is your fix for coming in for a final landing. And four, that's technically when Ryanair wants you to drop the gear at the last possible moment. So we have that in as our guide for that. Now we need to put in the descent and the forecast. And we'll put in the flight levels, there are three here, the Q&H is 1024, we already checked, and the descent, and this is taken again straight from the sim brief, is 235 at 14, for the two, uh, flight level 200, 253 slash 9 for flight level 150, and 319 slash 6 for flight level 100. And execute that. Now we're going to put in the departures and the arrival. Well, there are a lot of air, uh, uh, runways to choose from, so what we'll do is we'll, we'll contact the tower and get them to give us an assigned departure. So we're going to be going east, so we'll select east. O'Hare ground, Ryanair 186 with Kilo, request taxi for takeoff departure to the east. Ryanair 186, taxi 2 and hold short of runway 27 left via taxiway Alpha Golf Hotel 2, Hotel 3, Papa Papa, contact tower on 132.7 when ready. Taxiing, hold short runway 27 left using taxiway Alpha Golf Hotel 2, Hotel 3, Papa Papa, Ryanair 186. Well there we have it. So we know that we are going to be going from 27 left, which is pretty much what we thought. And there are no SIDs for this, so we will execute that. For the arrival, we've been told that the weather is coming in basically from 290, so we will put in this and we will put in that and then that gives us our full arrival. So now the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to go into legs and I'm going to switch to the plan on the EFIS and we'll go down through this and we will check to make sure that our route is good all the way through. There was a discontinuity there, so I've moved it up. Yes, and that. And that brings us right in onto runway 29. Ah, oh, that's good. That's good. Right, we have a flight plan. So now the next thing that we need to do is we need to perform the initialization 
and we push that. Now we take the reserves plus the trip and taxi and that will give us a total of 7,980 kilos which is close enough to 8,000 so we'll put 8. The reserves are 2.6 We double click that to bring in the zero fuel weight. Ryanair cost index is 10. Our flight level is 350. And the cruise wind at that is 30530. Now we have to remember that in the United States the transition altitude is 18,000. In the UK it's 6,000 and in many parts of Europe but sometimes it's also 5,000 so we have to change that to 18800 there. Execute and then go to the N1. We'll put in the seven takeoff is going to be flaps five. It's a good long runway. Double click and it will calculate the trim for us. The trim, of course, is that setting that's on the trim wheel. And then go V1, VR, V2. And then this is the figure that we're going to put into the MCP. And that's two seven three on the course heading and then we'll also put 35,000 up in here for our cabin pressure. The elevation at Portland, Maine is 76 feet. So we'll, we've got a hundred, we'll put a hundred in here because 76 is closer to a hundred than it is to 50. Okie dokie, we will bring up the stairs, close the hatch, is closed. We'll tell the attendants that we're ready to push back. Turn off this light. Make sure your seat belts are fastened. Let's do the... Okay, before start fuel, kilograms check, windows locked check, seat belt signs on check, door lights are out. MCP and M's that's been checked. Takeoff thrust is checked. CDU pre flight is completed. Rudder air alarm trim is set. Taxi takeoff briefing is anti collision lights is now on. Okay, so we'll make sure everything looks good. Checked. Door is secure. 
brake is off and we're going to go push back and to the right. Air conditioning is off. Today we're going to start engine number one. So we'll start this engine today and we're looking for 24. Yeah, we're surrounded by United. I feel like we should be calling the cavalry. There's 24. Introduce the fuel. Now we're going to be watching for this. And at the same time, we're going to be watching up here for 115 volts. Good. Oil pressure is looking good. And there it is. We have a burn. Now we'll do the same to engine number two. And we'll stop the pushback. Switch this to engine two. Put the handbrake on. We're looking for 24. There's 24. Now we're going to be checking, making sure that the oil pressure is good and the engine gas temperature is building up. Good, oil pressure has come up. And we have 115 volt on engine number two. Good, we have a good start now. We're going to switch to the main engines generating power and we're going to turn on the air conditioning, turn off the APU and that is how we start an engine. Okay, everybody ready? In that case, For taxi, we need recall, check, probe heat, check, anti-ice as required, good, isolation valve auto and closed, check, engine start levers idle and detent, check, flight deck door closed and locked, check, flight controls, check, flaps, we need five, have the flaps in transit. Good, we have green light on the flaps. We have auto brake set to RTO, check. Speed brake lever is down and detent, check. Ground equipment is all clear, good. We are ready now for taxi. just set our minimums so we're all set local time is 750 we are on time good and lights are on give a little bit of power to get unstuck
are leaving Concourse C behind us. Taxiing out to runway 27 left. Controls are good. Approaching now the uh, all short lines. And we'll get our takeoff clearance. O'Hare Tower, Ryanair 186 at runway 27 left, ready for takeoff east departure. Ryanair 186 cleared for takeoff runway 27 left. Departure to the east approved. Cleared for takeoff runway 27 left, Ryanair 186. Okay, we've got our clearance. So, takeoff briefing is correct, engine bleeds are on. Continuous on engine start switches, cabin is secure. Right, we will now taxi into position. TCAS is now on. Lights are on. Clock has started. Keep our eye open for any aircraft that might be coming in. And we'll line ourselves up on the center line.
now, advanced engines to N1 power. And toga button push.
at an altitude. And we'll release the seatbelt sign at a standard altitude.
Portland International Airport Information Echo 1443 Zulu Wind Calm Visibility Greater than 20 miles Sky condition Clear Temperature Minus 1 Dew point Minus 1 6 Altimeter 1 0 2 4 Landing and departing Runway 2 Niner BFR aircraft say direction of flight. All aircraft read back hold short instructions. Advise controller on initial contact you have. Echo. Portland International. Airport information. Echo. 1443. Zulu. Wind. Calm. Visibility. Greater than 20 miles. Sky condition. Clear. Temperature. Minus 1. Dew point. My
186 is 17 miles southwest with echo to land. Line Air 186, Portland Tower, enter left traffic, runway 2 Nila, altimeter 1024. Fly left downwind, runway 2 minor, Ryanair 186. the airport in sight, right over there. <coughs> Crew, prepare for landing.
is secure, speed brake lever is on. Light slope.
Clear to land runway two minor. Clear to land runway two minor. Ryanair one eight six. Landing checklist is complete. Six turn next taxiway. Ryanair one eight six contact ground on one two one point minor. Going to one two one point minor. Ryanair one eight six.
engines off, seat belts off. Welcome to Portland, Maine. And and shutdown is complete.